And the second you slightly drift out of time, it just freezes. It doesn't work. The screen sometimes turns off, but most of the time the screen just freezes and it's just unusable. Oh my god! Oh, this never gets light. Oh. Just gotta get it over this hump. Get it over the hump! So it's that time again, it's time to talk about the Game Boy Mega Machine. I know, it's like a broken record. This project has been going on for like two years and it's just so slow because the process is so, so tedious. So yeah, you'll notice it looks a bit different to last month where this was pretty much in exactly the same place. So basically at the bottom is a brand new cabinet that I've made. I glued it and used Brawl and Cures as counterweights and then just tried building it by myself. It was a bit of a hassle. But, I've, but I got there in the end. The central part, I haven't fully decided, but there's going to be a keyboard here. Either it's going to roll out on shelves or it's going to be permanently fixed in place. But the problem with that is somebody might walk into the side of it and get their leg. And, be like, Ooh. and then either side of these two empty holes, this is where the speakers are going to go. I'm not 100% sure what the speakers are going to be yet, but I'm really edging towards making some homemade Leslie speakers, which I haven't even thought about how to do yet. But I'm sure it's possible with a little bit of trial and error at some point next year. I'm not even a massive fan of the sound of Leslie speakers, I just think they look cool. There, I said it. Well, yeah, you'll notice that this already makes it look a lot taller. Uh, this hasn't even got the top cabinet on it yet. There's another top cabinet on there. Well, I luckily got some help from my girlfriend to put these two on, but then we tried to get the next one on, and yeah, that just that's just not happening. I need a bit more help to get the next one up, but we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that in a little bit. Woo! Okay. But I'm using that as a good opportunity not to get overwhelmed by the amount of jobs of fine tuning and troubleshooting certain issues with some of these Game Boys. Today, I'm hoping by the end of this video, we're going to get some music out of this, which will crazily be enough the first time this makes sound in about nine or ten months. <laughs> The last video that this made sound was when I built the filter modules and then about two weeks after that coronavirus hit and I had to shove this thing in storage. But now it's time to bring it back slowly but surely. In the last video I was talking about my woes regarding the IPS screens that I got which were brand new screens that I've now put in every single one of the Game Boys in this cabinet and the other cabinet that is sat on the floor over there because we haven't got the upper body strength to get it onto the top yet. The issue that I was having was the fact that when you turn on the CPU modulators this is the thing that adjusts the clock speed of the Game Boys, which in turn adjusts the pitch of the Game Boys. Well, basically, when you turn that on, the tiny little brains inside the screen get confused and it basically just makes the screen turn off. And this was a problem because it just meant that you had no visual feedback on where the pitch was taking it. Well, luckily, I found a solution to that. I messed around with the vertical sync, the horizontal sync, and the clock. These were the sync signals that the Game Boy was sending to the screen. I was basically messing around with these until I found the best situation I could for, you know, the screen to give some sort of visual feedback. The best way that I found was just isolating the vertical sync. Basically the solution was uh, pin 12 which is vertical sync out of this. All I needed to do is send that to ground and what that did is it stopped the vertical signal getting over to the screen. So now it sends that pin to ground and I get no vertical sync going in. Obviously in normal operation this is reasonably useless because it makes the screen very annoying to look at. In CPU modulation mode it makes it visible, it doesn't freeze, and that was the problem I had. So the clock and the horizontal sync from the Game Boy actually go into the screen, and this kind of makes it like go a bit weird and ticky, but the vertical sync is completely uh, just floating. This amazingly stops the screen from crashing, and yeah, you can see what's going on. We'll have a look at that closer in a bit. But I also included an unlisted video, which is below, which was on Patreon before, of basically the process that I took to do this. So you can see that below if you're interested in you know, the, the, the insides and the gubbins of how I made these IPS screens talk to the Game Boy with CPU mod. There's a few things that I still need to fix, but hopefully we're gonna have music by the end of this video. Please, I really hope so. Just look at how awesome those screens look. They look incredible. Like, I didn't think I was gonna like the multicolored thing. I was just gonna leave them all black and diverted. But these look amazing. And again, without the light, we've got on, we've got off, and we've got everything. 
in between. Oh yeah, yeah, look at that. Oh dear, so after a couple of hours of like uh, looking through it and fine tuning it, trying to get it ready to play some music, I've realized I've been an absolute dummy and I've just, there's problems that have just come back that were haunting me a year ago with this. Because it seems right now the data signals that are talking to all the Game Boys are just noisy and they're not actually receiving their MIDI notes anymore and I just, I don't understand why. So there is some good news. The screens look absolutely incredible and the backlights look even better. It's just like, it's a completely new machine. However, I'm still not able to play music on it because something is wrong and I can't find it. None of the Game Boys are actually listening to the data stream. I need to do some troubleshooting and stuff and this is gonna be in the next episode. Oh, so basically the Game Boy Mega Machine is a never-ending story. I've got to be honest, I was very optimistic when I started this video and I thought I was going to be able to finish with a couple of Christmas songs on the Game Boy Mega Machine. But now I've looked more at the Game Boy Mega Machine and just realised that I'm just an utter plonker. It's just, yeah, it's not happening. It's not happening. Basically the problem is, is this project has spanned nearly two years and when I started it, I was pretty damn stupid. Two years later, well, I'm still stupid, but I'm less stupid than I was. I've learned a lot about electronics in that time because I haven't gone to school or university to do this. I've basically learned all this stuff by trial and error. And yeah, two years of trial and error have been pretty invaluable with building this thing. The problem is, is there is a very important part of the circuit that I made when I was more stupid than I am now. And the problem is that stupid circuit is ruining everything that I'm putting into it right now. So what I need to do is basically redesign the whole damn thing. <laughs> the problem is in episode two, I designed the separate Game Boy modules with MOSFETs that buffered the uh, data signal that was coming into the Game Boys. The problem with this is they're not really suited for this job and I should have used logic buffers or something like that. So I basically need to redesign the circuit board inside these uh, Game Boy modules. Also in other news, today is the day a brand new Cosmo module uh, has come out. In the module a month series, it's called the 1153 Bounce Bounce Bounce, 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 bounce. You know, like bounce, 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 bounce. It's an envelope generator that simulates the bouncy ball program. You know, like in the analog computers of past, you know, like we goes boo, 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 boo. And the link to that module is below as well. Anyway, this video has ended on a bit of a low note. It's a bit of a sad news because I was really hoping to play some Christmas songs, like I said. But anyway, you, you just, you just, you just never know, do you? I've got a big pile of knobs to put on the Game Boy Mega Machine as well to put patrons' names on there. There's a few empty knobs left on that project, so if you want your name on the Game Boy Mega Machine, then go and check out the Patreon. Well, if you miss out on the Game Boy Mega Machine, well, not to fear, your name will get on a knob on the next project, whatever it may be. And yeah, if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to try it. Mm.